we, uh, have always got along fine with the niggas. We never mistreated them. And there's no complaints. And they are all happy. They are all happy. with the Panthers, we was asking with them, you know, civil rights movement, we was asking, you know, now, now those people that were asking, they're all dead and in jail, so now what do you think we're going to do? Ask? And it simply says exactly what black people have been crying for for 400 years. If you don't break the cycle, history repeats. If you don't crash the system, it reboots. If you don't eliminate the virus, it thrives. This is the algorithm of white supremacy. An algorithm is a list of steps followed to finish a task. The task or objective of white supremacy has always been the same, domination. Rather, your present is 1619, 1775, 1863, 1968, 2020 or a hundred years in the future if this algorithm has not been ended then its goal will remain the same despite the rising and falling of nations and institutions the algorithm of white supremacy's reach is global its history is evil and its effects have been injected deeply into the present focus your senses open your eyes ignore all distractions and upload this information into your mind. Jesus Christ, do you think he'd really agree with what you devils did? I thought he said, without love, you have nothing. Are you sure we are looking in the same book? The Supreme Pontiff, commonly known as the Pope, is the worldwide leader of the Catholic Church. He determines what is acceptable for millions of people worldwide. His words and decrees are taken as the word of God. He is believed to be free of error. This is called papal infallibility. In 1452, Pope Nicholas V issued a papal bull known as Dum Diversus. A papal bull is an official proclamation or decree issued by the Pope. With his words being seen as that of God's, Pope Nicholas issued Dumb Diversus, which had a disastrous effect on Africa. In the 1400s, there were laws clearly regulating who Christians could and could not enslave. When Portuguese ships began returning with slaves from West Africa, Pope Nicholas V addressed the issue of how to treat what he referred to as pagans. He gave King Alfonso of Portugal the right to invade, search out, capture, and subdue all Saracens and pagans whatsoever, and other enemies of Christ wheresoever placed, and the kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities, dominions, possessions, and all movable and immovable goods whatsoever held and possessed by them and to reduce their persons to perpetual slavery. Let's put that in other words. The Pope gave a European king the right to invade in Jesus' name, conquer in Jesus' name, steal in Jesus' name, and enslave in Jesus' name. Yet the man believed to be Jesus' representative on earth, a man whose words are put on par with that of God's, a man believed to be free of error, the most holy living being on the planet, was actually the devil, and may his name rot in the bowels of history forever in Jesus' name. After the hunt, it is not the prey who authors the story, but the hunters. Rest assured that the authors will justify all of their murderous ways and forgive themselves for their prey's destruction.
and as the survivors scramble, attempting to rebuild their former lives, the hunters will do all they can to silence them. <laughs> Devil. A long line of justifications led Europe to perpetrate one of the worst atrocities ever, the transatlantic slave trade. Even to this day, people attempt to justify the slave trade by saying that European slave traders purchased slaves from Africans. They'll go just far enough into the past to blame the oppression of black people on black people. Yet the truth is more complex than they can handle. There is bound to be some snakes in every group of people. European slave traders took advantage of this for their own benefit at the cost of countless black lives. Although some Africans participated in the slave trade, many fought against it, building fortifications around their villages and assigning lookouts to alert the people. The fight continued aboard the ship in the form of rebellions, hunger strikes, and even suicide. The transatlantic slave trade haunted the people of Africa and they fought against it. Africans also did not view the slave trade as selling their own people, as they did not have a united black identity, as some people ignorantly suggest when they say that Africans sold their own people into slavery. Africans were not united. The Europeans were the ones who were united. They were united in their desire to have black slaves. Slavery wasn't new, but what the Europeans brought to it was a deeply racial connotation justified by their highest religious official, the Pope. It was the Europeans who created, ran, and heavily benefited from the intricately complex and economically lucrative system of the transatlantic slave trade. A symphony of sorrow and death, the longest forced movement of people ever recorded, spanning centuries. Hundreds of bodies would be packed together tightly, chained to the bottom of a ship. Initially, merchant ships were modified for use in the slave trade. In time, they began building ships specifically to carry slaves on. There wasn't enough space to stand, and the air was foul as people lay dead, scared and alone in their own bodily wastes. This was the Middle Passage. Traders bought Africans with European goods and took them from West Africa across the Atlantic Ocean to what the Europeans called the New World. Some estimates say that 10 to 15% of Africans died during the voyage, which lasted nearly three months. The survivors were sold as slaves and returned for goods such as sugar, rum, and molasses, and the slave traders turned around and went back to Europe to start the journey over again. And they hail Western civilization as the pinnacle of humanity, when indeed it seems to be the pinnacle of inhumanity. There was no age of exploration. There was no beauty in European colonization. The story of the American colonies is not some patriotic dream where America's manifest destiny was fulfilled. This was an invasion, a story all about benefiting from death, genocide, and perpetual servitude, causing problems and ignoring their effects even till this day. When we mention what happened, you look in the other direction. This evil was carried out against our people, we say. But you say blacks sold other blacks. It lasted centuries, we say. But you say it was a long time ago. It still has effects today, we say. But you say you were never a slave and I was never a slave owner. This is the algorithm of white supremacy. They always ignore, attack, or deny. If you don't break the cycle, history repeats. If you don't crash the system, it reboots. <laughs> We are African, and we happen to be in America. We're not American. We are people who formerly were Africans who were kidnapped and brought to America. Our forefathers weren't the pilgrims. 
We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. The rock was landed on us. We were brought here against our will. We were not brought here to be made citizens. And because we weren't brought here to be made citizens today, now that we've become awakened to some degree and we begin to ask for those things which they say are supposedly for Americans, they look upon us with hostility and unfriendliness. We invested 310 years of slave labor, 310 years, every day of which your and my mother and father worked for nothing. Not eight hours a day. There was no union in that day. They worked from sunup until sundown, from can't see in the morning until can't see at night. They never had a day off. And on Sunday, they were allowed to sit down and sing about when they died, they wouldn't be slaves no more. When they died. When they died. Sixteen nineteen, the year believed to have marked the first arrival of Africans in the colony of Virginia. In actuality, captive Africans were present in what would become the United States for over a hundred years before 1619, as the European trade of Africans began in the mid 1400s. Throughout the years, many have claimed that the first slave ship was named Jesus. Although claiming a first slave ship is difficult, it is true that the first major English trader did use a boat named Jesus of Lubeck. John Hawkins was said to have been a devout Christian, often holding service on board and telling his crew to serve God and love one another, all while plundering ships, stealing slaves, and lying to Africans to lure them to the new world. Africans entered into this new world a new world that Europe granted itself access to by invading, spreading disease, killing natives, and continually breaking treaties. They were sold at slave auctions, inspected like cattle, having their mouths pried open, their muscles squeezed, their bodies violated, separated from families, and brought to a place unfamiliar to them, a place to build a world for those who had destroyed theirs. What happens when you subjugate a group of people to the lowest levels of society? The people will always fight their oppressor. But many make the ignorant claim that enslaved people in America did not fight back, but rather waited for the North to end slavery. They never heard of the Stono Rebellion of 1739, the German Coast Uprising of 1811, or Nat Turner's Rebellion. But the slave owners had heard of these and they were fearful of being killed in uprisings. In order to calm their fears, laws regulating the actions and treatment of slaves known as slave codes were written into law. Enslaved people had to have written permission from their overseer to travel and if they attempted to run, they could be branded with an R on their cheek, have their hamstrings cut, or be killed. Blacks were prohibited from owning weapons, and if they were caught doing so, they would receive 39 lashes and have their weapon confiscated. If an enslaved person attempted to defend themselves from their master, the slaveholder had the right to kill them. Enslaved people were considered property, so they were prohibited from owning property. Blacks accused of any crime against a white person were sentenced to death by all white juries. There were even laws punishing whites if they attempted to help enslaved people. It was illegal for slaves to read and write. Anyone caught teaching them how to do so was subject to large fines and up to six months in jail. They were also prohibited from congregating due to the fear of them organizing to fight against their own oppression. If a black man was accused of raping a white woman, he would be castrated or executed, all while the bodies of enslaved women were free to be violated without repercussion. Children born to enslaved women were born as slaves and in most cases died as slaves. But you, dear listener, were never a slave. This has no effect on the present, or at least that's what 